So I've uh, already masked into the 100 milliliter beaker here 753 milligrams of the equimolar mixture of tryptamine and vanillin and transdynamic acid. And I'm going to switch to extraction solvents and use methyl tripbutyl ether, MTBE, instead of using uh, diethyl ether. Because MTBE is not prone to form peroxides, and therefore it's not likely, it's not stabilized with BHT, which we saw was contaminated at vanillin. And because I'm going to be using uh, a slightly smaller volume of material, uh, I'm going to use 30 milliliters of MTBE, and I'm only going to use 15 milliliters at a time of my 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid. I'm actually going to switch to using a smaller separatory funnel as well. 60 milliliter separatory funnel instead of a 125 should get the job done. So we're going to put that stopcock in there. Putting on the washer first, and then the O-ring, and then the nut to hold the push on the O-ring and hold the washer tight against the junction. And this nut seems to be stripped. I hope it's the nut that's stripped and not the actual one. Also, I'm going to grab a different nut. If I can get that to stay tight, yep. So that nut can be thrown away later. So we've got our separatory funnel, and this is a slightly different size stopper for the top. But it's again a penny head that allows us to hold it and not have to put it down if we don't want to. So smaller iron ring for the smaller funnel as well. So we're going to add our 30 milliliters of MTBE. organic solvent and we're going to add the 15 milliliters of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid and then we're going to stick a stir bar in there the smaller stir bar and stir that at about 300 to try to see if we can get all or almost all of that to go into solution it up a little bit. Certainly 3 molar hydrochloric acid did a really nice job of extracting the tryptamine, but 3 molar should have been overkill. So we should be able to do it with a smaller amount. And I'm going to do two 15 milliliter extractions instead of three 10 milliliter extractions, just to simplify the process a little bit. And I've got my beaker labeled A for acidic solution. Same beaker that I used yesterday. So we're just letting that dissolve. I used the diethyl ether because I knew that both vanillin and cinnamic acid were soluble in them, and I don't know for sure that they're soluble in methyl tributyl ether, uh, but I suspect they are, since things that are soluble in one ether solvent are often soluble in another. So it looks like that's dissolved pretty nicely. You can take that stir bar out. careful not to let those end up down the sink.
and we can transfer this to the separatory funnel. It's really not necessary for, you to, for me to mix those layers significantly in the separatory funnel since they've already mixed pretty well while stirring. But I'm going to mix them anyway. Just going to shake them around a little bit. Confirm that there's no pressure being released, which we wouldn't expect there to be. And then the other 15 milliliters of hydrochloric acid for the second extraction can go into the same beaker. We're going to draw that bottom water layer into our beaker labeled A. You can see that it's a little bit yellow. The tryptamine has gone in. And again, when we get close to the bottom and we can see that line, we just flip this over a couple of times to get the residue out. We're going to add the second portion of the hydrochloric acid. And we'll shake that around a little. Waiting until it doesn't generate any more pressure. When it's all done reacting. Methyl terbutyl ether is a nice extraction solvent, a nice alternative to ether because of its greater safety since it doesn't form explosive peroxides. And it's very inexpensive because it has for years been used as a gasoline additive. So you can get large quantities of MTBE cheap. It's got a nice low density, so it floats on top just the way diethyl ether does. So there's our acid layer. Only about 30 milliliters of it this time. And we're going to set that aside. And later, we will be taking that acid layer and neutralizing the acid with 6 molar sodium hydroxide and hopefully filtering out our tryptamine. So the next thing we want to do, I've rinsed the graduated cylinder that I'm using for my aqueous solutions, and I'm going to measure out 15 milliliters of our 5% sodium citrate. Unlike sodium bicarbonate, this won't form CO2, so we won't get that bubbling when we add it because of the residual small amount of HCl that's probably in the subfunnel. And I'm going to go ahead and measure out the second 100 milliliters, or 15 milliliter rather. Got my beaker label B, which is where our basic solution will go with the sodium citrate. And we're just going to shake that around. Hopefully the citrate ion is deprotonating the carboxylic acid and not deprotonating the phenol. So we're going to get our sodium salt of cinnamic acid, sodium cinnamate, into the water layer and leave the vanillin behind if all goes well. So we'll just let those layers settle. And then do our second extraction.
rinse that to get any residual citrate out. And I know that the methyl terpene ether layer is going to be washed with a 15 milliliter portion of saturated sodium chloride to try to get as much water as possible out. So I'm going to measure my 15 milliliters of saturated sodium chloride into that freshly rinsed graduate cylinder. So our layers are separated. We now have 30 milliliters or so of our sodium citrate solution. that we will be neutralizing with 6 molar hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to set that aside next to the 6 molar hydrochloric acid so I know that's what I'm neutralizing it with. And now I'm going to wash the MTB layer, which hopefully still contains the vanillin, with the saturated sodium chloride. And recall that this has two purposes. We're trying to pull as much water as possible out of the MTBE layer. Water is a little less soluble in MTBE than it is in diethyl ether, so there's probably less in there to begin with. But the low salt concentration in the MTB layer versus the high salt concentration in the aqueous layer will try to drag that water out. And at the same time, trying to lose as little as possible of our materials into the water layer because organics are always less soluble in salt water than they are in ordinary water. So we'll rinse the sodium chloride out of there. So I'm going to use the original beaker to draw the aqueous layer into. You can see that there's a little bit of white solid crystallizing on the tip. So we're going to be losing a little bit of material there, but hopefully not enough to matter. And we'll just do a couple of flips. I'm pretty confident I don't need this water layer. I'm just going to dump it. So the MTB layer, which we hope contains vanillin, is going to be transferred to our V flask. And I can rinse the septory funnel because I'm going to use it again to extract the cinnamic acid once I've neutralized that solution. Step funnels at the ready. And what I need now is the sodium sulfate, the anhydrous sodium sulfate, to dry that vanillin solution to make sure that there's no water when I transfer that onto the rotovap. And I forgot to get that out this morning, so. A little bit of sodium sulfate. And a scoop. And we'll just scoop a little sodium sulfate in there. Give that a swirl. just a tad more. So when we swirl that, we want the solution to be clear, not cloudy at all. And when we stop swirling, we want the material to be somewhat free-flowing. It doesn't take a lot. So that looks like it's enough. I could stir this, but I'm just going to set this aside this time. let it 
continue to dry. So we've done the extraction. We have our 30 milliliters of uh, aqueous acid that we extracted with 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid, 2 by 15 milliliters. And we've got our basic solution, 30 milliliters of the base that we extracted with the 5% sodium citrate solution. We're now going to neutralize the acidic solution with 6 molar sodium hydroxide, the basic solution with 6 molar hydrochloric acid, and then extract the cinnamic acid from this one and just filter that. <laughs>